All right, today we're going to go through a few different exercises for strengthening the serratus anterior and improving some of its motor control. Uh, we'll start with a couple of the more uh, commonly used ones, such as the push-up plus series. I, all, I like to have my patients start on the wall, so go ahead and do that, Manny. All right, they're gonna do just a normal push-up, and then as they come back up, a little bit of a protraction of the scapula so that you kind of see some arching of the thoracic spine there. And then come back down. One more repetition. All right, good. Perfect. All right, and then we progress that to on the counter so that there's a little bit more gravity force to it. So go ahead. Same thing. Looking for that protraction of the scapula there. Come back down. All right, good. And then on the floor. And you can vary this with on the knees first and then move up to uh, knees off the floor. But the same concept applies, protraction of the scapula there. Good, all right, go ahead and stand up. Man. All right, another commonly used one is uh, uh, scapular punches in supine. So go ahead and line your back, Manny. And reach up, up towards the sky. So just reaching forward uh, or upward into the, towards the ceiling, the patient is going to just reach higher and then back down, keeping the elbows straight. Again, this is working on the protraction component. What you'll see is a lot of compensations is patients want to do more of a bench press, bench press motion. So go ahead and show that, Manny. Um, more like, yeah, like that. And then just back here. They don't get that scapular protraction component. And that's really the entire purpose of the exercise. You can progress this with different different uh, weights onto the hands. All right, go ahead and stand up. A couple new ones that I've been using a lot more recently include scaption with protraction. So he performs full scaption all the way as high as he can elevate his arm. But while doing so, he's adding a, a protraction component throughout the entire motion. Very good. And back down. So. When we say protraction, what the cue I tell patients is that you, they're, they're really reaching towards where their fingers are throughout the whole motion. So at first they're reaching towards the floor, and then as they elevate, maybe he's reaching towards the counter, all right? then he's reaching uh, to shoulder height, and now as he continues to go higher, he's reaching up towards the ceiling, and sometimes you have to add a little bit of a shrug in here, especially if people have weak upper traps. All right. This is actually very fatiguing to add that scapular uh, protraction component. All right. And something you want to watch for is keeping the chin tucked so they don't have compensation with cervical extension. And also, something you will often see is patients' arms will come forward and that you'll see just more of a, a pure protraction, internal rotation of the scapula, as opposed to just protraction where they're reaching outward in the scapular plane. All right, that's good with that. The last one that I, I've been using more recently, go ahead and uh, get on all fours. This is called quad rock back with thoracic kyphosis. So you start in, go ahead and 90-90 uh, position, there you go. All right, start in the 90-90 position, and uh, Manny here is going to arch his back and create as much thoracic kyphosis as he can with the thumbs turned towards the ed edge of the table. All right. The reason for doing that is that externally rotated position is more natural for shoulder uh, elevation. Now while keeping this maximum thoracic kyphosis, he's going to rock backward as far as he can. What you'll often see is as they sink back, they start to lose the thoracic kyphosis, just as Manny is doing here. Keep that up there, Manny. There you go. That's better. Now come back up. You're not going to go all the way back towards the heels. As soon as they start to lose it, that's when you head back up. Let's do one more repetition. This one is very fatiguing. You get protraction of the scapula here and, and flexion of the thoracic spine. Good. I usually give three sets of three for that to start because it is fatiguing. And another benefit of it is that in doing the flexion of there, uh, the mid cervical spine around T4 through T6 is typically, you can relax, uh, typically a hypokyphotic, uh, meaning that it's sitting in too much extension and lacks flexion. Uh, and by mobilizing into flexion with this uh, exercise, it can actually improve some of the neural input.